Okay, we're recording. All right, I'd like to call this, I guess we call this a special meeting of the Tuxedo Town Board to continue our work uh, reviewing the zoning code. Uh, if you would all join me with the Pledge of Allegiance, get this meeting started. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. Of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Oh, there she is. So I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'm sorry I didn't do that earlier. At 6.31, I believe we began. And I know Marissa Goldbaum is on vacation. So um, I think we're on our own. So... Michelle, if you want to turn the reins over to Bonnie or give an introduction, how would you choose to proceed? Thank you. All right. So, uh, well, last week uh, we went over half of the uses um, and uh, reviewed the survey, four of us. Uh, Dave, I don't know if you ever submitted yours, but four of us submitted answers to the survey and we based our discussion on those results from those surveys um, just to identify uses we all agree on and move forward so we have the second half to do tonight and we're going to focus only on those uses uh, or answers that got at least a 50 percent vote um, after we finish the uses then we're going to which is pretty much we're going line by line horizontally then we're going to go vertically and uh, take a look at the final results for two zones, the tourism business zone and the neighborhood business zone. And we're just going to say, okay, now that we went line by line, uh, let's take a look at those two zones and make sure we're all comfortable with those two zones and the uses we applied to those. Okay, make sense, Bonnie? Sure. Okay, great. Thanks. So I'm going to share my screen as I did last time. And it's not that one, it's this one. Can you see that? Not yet, but it takes a minute sometimes. Okay. Still don't. Hmm. I definitely have share. I know with Zoom you have to actually say apply, but I don't see that um, you know, requirement this is, yeah. here. Okay, so it just needs to be opened on your yep, screen. It is. And then the share is down below at the middle. <clears throat> yep. Oh. Share content. So let me try it again. Share screen three, share. There we go. Perfect. Finally. Okay. Beautiful. All right, we just need to redo this frame. Okay. So um, I had a couple of questions. Um, because can, I wasn't, hey, can zoom, you see that? Zoom in, a, zoom in a little bit for us. Yep. The other end. There you go. That's good. Right, let me just make sure I'm not totally off. No, nope, that was right. right. Is that good? Yeah. Sure, but what you had before work too. <laughs> yeah, right. a little bit more would be good. Just trying to get it where it doesn't lose the total column. Okay, how's that? Perfect. Okay. So, um, Bonnie, if you could pause just one second, Michelle. Sure. I'm having some audio problems. I may have to call in. So, uh, I'll probably mute myself and listen to my audio from the phone. But just letting you know that would be me calling in. Over. Would you, okay, would you be able to um, see it? Oops. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just if you press alt plus enter, you can bring that whole thing full screen. This one for any of the viewers, if they have a hard time seeing it, alt plus enter and then escape to go back to normal. Okay, oh, okay, that's cool. All right, so commercial recreational uses outdoor. Um, there was a 50% here for the BG, for, sorry, for the GB district. 
Um, and again, to remind everybody, GB is essentially those zoning districts that are along Route 17, such as by Hickory Hollow um, and over by Duck Cedar, the contractor's yards, um, and within the Tuxedo Hamlet, um, including uh, where the soil activities are going on. So, um, is it reasonable to allow commercial recreational use outdoor within the GB zone? Well, I think it belongs in tourism business, but. But it doesn't have to be restricted to there. Remind, remind us what sort of things we're talking about. So the definition is, can you see that? Sure. Okay. So there those are the go. activities. Yeah, that's okay. Tennis, racquetball, swimming. I mean, there, it's a variety. A batting yes. cage, a driving range. Um, you know, there may not be properties that are that large to accommodate it, but I think there's some uses that could be accommodated. So if you think that's okay, again, it's up to the board. I, I think that's okay. Yeah, miniature golf looks good. <laughs> yeah. That could fit on many properties. Maria, you're muted. I, I voted yes for that. And I thought, okay. well, Dottie Audrey's and those guys, you know, there could be things there that could add to outdoor. Like they have those climbing things in like some places in New Jersey. You know, that might be. It might know. be fun. Okay. Um, then the other was fuel storage depot pre existing. I mean, we know that it's going to end up in the GB where the existing one is. But I think that there was just a bigger question of whether we were treating them with um, as pre existing non conforming or if we were going to allow them by special use permit. And so that's really the question. And maybe that requires another discussion with Howard. I mean, we can make them uh, pre existing non conforming, right? We could also say that the use is a fuel storage depot pre existing and ultimately it'll just apply to them. Right. Um, maybe this is one we can ask Howard about just to yeah, make my, sure. I... My understanding is if they are pre existing but non conforming, they're pretty much locked in place effectively. I mean, they can do repairs and, and that sort of right. thing, but they can't but really they change couldn't... what they're doing. Right. And they couldn't um, add more bulk. You know, storage, and I think it comes down to whether you want to allow expansion. Well, but not only expansion. I think they would be hard pressed to say go to an an alternate, you know, fuel. Whatever, whatever is going to replace gasoline and and heating oil. Okay. They wouldn't be able to do that under a non-conforming use as a special permit. We have you know, the opportunity to to uh, allow modifications but have control there on them. But again, yeah, I guess we should talk to Howard about this and see what the real legal ramifications of those two are. I, I think we can also revisit when we get to the non-conforming use section, uh, because I think that there's sometimes um, some minor flexibility uh, to allow some improvements, as long as it's an improvement to the, um, to the use. Um, and sometimes there's even the ability to do some minor expansion. So I think let's highlight that. And for now, we'll say um, pre existing or non conforming, and we'll bring it back up to, we'll bring it up with Howard. Well, one of the concerns, obviously, is the location on the Ramapo River. All right. I mean, it seems to me we're talking fuel, we're talking oil or gasoline, right? I mean, that's the only thing that's stored. I mean, if you're talking something else that might be considered as a battery storage, but I don't see that as fuel storage. So no, <clears throat> no, but you know, the guys who were heavily invested in whale ships didn't think that that petroleum thing was going to be anything important either. Okay, I don't think there was zoning back then. <laughs> True. But I mean, we're not getting them away from the river until they decide to get up and leave. So, right. You know, so they're going to be there. They're going to be there. So, 
Um, but I, I, I was mostly concerned about the expansion thought that. Right, which would be more controlled if it's not conforming as opposed to if it's pre-existing. Ah, so, yes. So, so let's, uh, as Ned suggested in the chat, I mean, in the definition, should we just define what we mean by fuel? Just when we go to definitions, we don't have to do that right now because we want, we have a lot to get to. Money could a solar field be defined as fuel? No, because we're going to regulate um, solar separately. So this okay. is for the bulk storage of fuel, oil, or petroleum products. There you go. All right. So now we know what it is. Or propane. Do they have propane there? They do. They do. Technically, propane's a petroleum product. Petroleum product. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to add a note. I mean, but, but we need to be careful not to over specify. Bio oil, right? Is not a petroleum product. How about, right. like, how about like Ned just said, anything flammable. Like I guess the question is, so. Again, this gets to the pre existing versus um, allowing them as non conforming. If they're non conforming, they'll continue to use the products they have. If you want them to expand and or change out their fuel product, um, then you should be more flexible so that it encompasses those other petroleum products. And again, is biomass, is that petroleum? I'm good with it. Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I think that we are, uh, I think we're good for now. And we're going to look at the question of non conforming pre existing or special use and see which of those gives us better control. After we look at the language of those things and 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 discuss with council. Yeah. Okay. I would imagine that there's DEC or other government. Uh, uh, regulations that would also be superseding even what we're trying to consider in these kind of cases. Now, right now, the zoning isn't anticipating or proposing to allow battery storage. So, if that's something that this board wants to contemplate in terms of regulating, um, then you need to think about that. And I, th that battery storage, that kind of stuff is going to be it's going to fall under utilities, I think. I mean, I, but. Well, I think, um, you know, Frank's on, so he may be able to, um. Address this, but some communities explicitly regulate them so that they can regulate them. Um, it gets a little con, uh, not confusing, but. I mean, you could have battery storage associated, I think, with a, a utility provider, but there are commercial enterprises that also want to do battery storage. So I think, again, it depends on the extent to which you even want to allow it, or if you're just allowing it as part of a public utility. I think we should do some more investigating on that. We'll talk, you know, we could talk to Frank and I, I think we have a lot more research to do on that before yeah. we can make a decision tonight. Right, and that's something you can always add after the fact. Once you do the research, you don't have to approve everything and you know anticipate everything. That's something you might want to do research and then do an amendment later. Um, golf course, this is pretty um, simple. I mean, right now, tourism business is really the place where you can accommodate it. Remember that it's also allowed in the residential zone that allows the golf course down in um, Eagle Valley. But as far as the non-residential zones, um, the area that has um, you know, a location for a golf course in theory is, is the TV zone. Uh, grocery store, um, you had a hundred percent for the, uh, Hamlet, the tuxedo Hamlet, the Southfields Hamlet and the NB zone. So otherwise it was 25%. Oh, sorry. And GB, GB is 75%. Okay. Okay. Good. 
a health fitness facility. So it looks like, um, again, uh, Tuxedo Town Center, Southfields, GB Zone, and TB Zone, you're good. And B Zone, you're good. The RO and the LIO, you have 50%. Um, right, so now we have the benefit of they being here, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah, to this. we're talking about a health fitness facility. We're talking about um, a gym, right? Or, a, yep. I mean, so day spa, daycare room, physical therapy activities, refreshments. That strikes, me active being, exercise. that strikes me as being one of those uses that there's no reason to exclude it from RO or LIO. And it's one of those things that, you know. Some of the business models on that are, you know, come before work or after work or during lunchtime. So it's, you know, so it could make a go of it. I don't see why not. I guess it, it, the kind, I mean, I agree with you, Jay, but it kind of goes back to wanting to identify what we want in each of these zones, doesn't it? I mean, we, I, I guess I could go either way, but it just seems, uh, Okay, but yeah. why don't we want one of those there? Well, I, I, I'm just thinking uh, to identify what these things are going to be, how we how we would market it, I guess you would say. I also think it comes down to, again, if you have limited areas in which to allow these uses and you have an RO and LIO zone that's supposed to accommodate research office or light industrial, are you foregoing certain opportunities by allowing that there? And that's entirely, you know, the town board's call. Yeah, that that helps me, Bonnie. And, and I guess, Jay, what I'm trying to say is that since we have such limited areas, if these other uses, which wouldn't be bad to have in, in RO or LIO, but then there's no land left to create RO and LIO. Um, you know, I, I just think what would we prefer to have in our limited areas? That's the way I look at it. So we've heard from Jay, we've heard from um, Michelle, anybody else? I, I think speak. I voted yes for this. And I think that I, I had the same thought, like, yeah, we prefer that they're not there, but if we forbid it, then it cannot be there at all. Like, so, I don't know. I mean, I, I go to Bardonia PT and they were like right in the middle of, you know, like, uh, a business park. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I mean, I think that, um, these are businesses that are driven by having can be convenient to their clientele. Their the the RO and LIO zones are, are fairly. If there's anything that's isolated in tuxedo, they're fairly out of the way, and it's unlikely that someone's just going to decide to 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 put a a gym in in an empty office park. But, well, I'm good with both of them going RO and LIO, so I'll break the tie for you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hospital. So the areas where there's a question is the GB, the RO, and the LIO are clear. So it's really the GB zone. And frankly, I don't know to what extent you would even get a hospital, but, um, you know, clearly just because of parcel sizes. You know, you're not likely to accommodate it in the hamlets or the neighborhood business, but um, you did Could say that it was be okay. An animal the... hospital, by definition. No, we're we're regulating okay. that separately. Okay. So this is a human hospital. So thoughts on the on the GB? Correct. So um, I agree. You're okay with it. Yeah, but uh, sorry, you probably is down on your list. But where does uh, a nursing home like the Promenade fit in? Yeah, I, that was exactly what I was thinking of. I was like, wow. there's already a nursing home there now. Like, how is that different from a hospital? Or well, maybe they are different. But that's why I put yes on that. I think and I put yes a on a lot more stuff than than a lot of you guys did. 
We exactly. have our nursing home in the um, in the residential zone. It's a Technic residential zone there. Technically, it was a hospital, so there must be the zoning current zoning allowed for it. Yeah, now the current zoning does allow for it, and it's called out in the new zoning in a residential zone. Okay, I'm good with it. So you're good with the GB being hospital? Yes. Did you say okay? So do I have three? Or two, how many do I have here? I, I didn't get my uh, survey back, so probably made it easier because you'd be dealing with 33.3s here. So uh, <laughs> we do have that somewhere. But yeah, so that's 50% based on the four surveys. So I agree, GB. So 75. So that makes it three. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, I'm just Xing where the uses are, and I was going to carry over whether it was special use or permitted. You may want to comment on that later, but I'm first just making sure we have the uses down. All right, the so hotel, the areas where there's 50% is the Tuxedo Town Center, the GB zone, um, the NB zone, and remember that's just that one parcel really down in um, Southfields. So those are the ones that are 50%. Okay, so um, I mean, that's, uh, that's not Southfields. It's uh, Sterling Mine Road. <clears throat> that's the MB. Sorry, MB, MB is yeah. You said is, is um, Eagle Valley. I thought I said Eagle Valley. So we're we're talking general general lodging here, which also includes a bed and breakfast, correct? No, this is just like a plain hotel, not bed and breakfast. Okay. Um, once upon a time, I think we were going to allow bed and breakfast, and there. I think that dropped by the wayside years ago because people were concerned about them becoming boarding houses. So well, I'm not sure that we have better breakfast in there anymore. Can, I'm not going to bring that conversation back up, but it probably does need this. There is some scope to it. You know, we're trying to draw people to our town, um, yeah. Yeah. tourism wise, and it would be nice to have some opportunities there. But, you know, okay, we're, we're just talking about um, right now. Just, uh, uh, Yep. Now, another another bit of semantics. So difference between a hotel and a motel. Uh, we're not, I don't think we're defining them differently. I mean, historically hotel was, you're basically coming in a main lobby and you get to your room through a central hallway or through hallways. Whereas the motel was the kind of the motel court where you could go directly from your auto into separate rooms from the outside. If you can envision that. Okay, so that yeah, was thought of as the motel. Yep, yeah, that was thought of. The tuxedo motel is exactly that. Yeah. Uh, yep. Do we want more of that in our town? Do we want to allow for more of that? Or would we just say hotel only going forward and, and grandfather through the motel? I agree with you, Dave. Okay. That's what I say we should do. Oh, yeah, we please. don't have a definition yet because this was something we had resort in there and then the boards um, indicated they might want to add a hotel. So what are people's thoughts on hotels versus motels? Well, I, I think I just said my part. I mean, I, I don't think I want to see another motel here anywhere. Um, and I like the idea of uh, uh, grandfathering through the existing one. Uh, the new law to say hotels only described as um, with a foyer entrance, not a court type hotel. Right. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm certainly okay with that with a definition that clearly defines both of those, as you pointed out. You know, the uh, central hallway as a key element of a hotel. Uh, okay. I think whether you, whether we're considering it for different zones, of course, there's also uh, restrictions on on height, and I guess with hotels occupancy, you know, what mm -hmm. what scale are we talking about? Obviously, uh, has a lot to do with uh, how well it fits a particular zone. Right. So these are the um, three zones where they're in question, whether to allow them NB, GB and TTC. MB again down in Eagle Valley area. GB is up and down um, Route 17 
and you know the town center is that tuxedo hamlet i mean with with any of these is going to be uh, again specifications as setbacks and you know so I mean, we're talking generally notions of whether they should be approved, but obviously each site is going to have uh, its own restrictions. And, uh, you know, so I'm wondering how, how many properties are we really talking about where this could actually. Right. I mean, happen. I really don't, I don't know that I see it in the MB zone, um, the one parcel. Um, it's just not off the main highway. Um, typically hotels, if they're going to, come into the town, they would want to be on a main route. I would imagine they'd want to be on 17. But if you want the option or the opportunity, whether it happens or not, you could allow it. But those are the those are the three zones that 50% that was in play. And I don't know, Dave, if you want to be the, the tiebreaker again. Yeah, okay. So I know I agree with what everyone said. So TTC, no. Okay. Um, just not enough room. And uh, NB, no, just for the reason you stated. But um, I would say uh, SH, or no, sorry, GB, general, that's general business. Yep. Why yep. Not? I mean, that seems like a good fit. So, so that's Hickory so, Hollow. That's so I want to make <clears throat> the defense of the reason why I thought it should be allowed in town center. Um, there are, of course, some. So probably some possibly some issues with parking, but some clever person could turn Tuxedo Square into a tidy little boutique hotel with some meeting rooms and some restaurants on the first floor, and a bunch of rooms up on upstairs instead of that that underused office space. All right. So with that, then that's a good argument. So I would say, pending somebody having division, we shouldn't shut them out. So exactly, there are certainly a lot of organic restrictions as far as lot size and parking and all the rest of it. But a clever person could figure out how to make it work. I, I also about the hotels that are right now in uh, Slotesburg, I think they're considered quote unquote hotels, not bed and breakfast. The the three houses that um, yes, you know, right. I, I, that would I be like leave. that's almost like lodging occasions. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I guess it would fit within a, a hotel definition. But, so that's why uh, I voted. So bed, yes. and bed and breakfast, what's really defining about a bed and breakfast is typically um, they're owner occupied. They're really single family houses where you're renting out um, bedrooms to uh, accommodate people who want to stay. Um, but they're being served breakfasts. That's why they call them bed and breakfasts. Now, Airbnbs. Obviously, is a different animal that at some point the town board has to talk about. Where were we before? We were at twenty five percent TTC. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to change my vote. No, no, we, we were at wait, wait, wait. We were at fifty in TTC. Where are we? I thought we were at. Uh, if we were at twenty five, we wouldn't be discussing it. I could tell you. No, you brought it up. I believe. No, I brought it up at fifty when they voted against it. No, Let's I think 50 here. is the discussion. Oh, it is 50%. You're right. Five. You're right. Right. That's 50. Okay. All right. So I'm going to change my vote to uh, what Jay said. <laughs> okay. I, I voted yes. yes as well for that reason. Okay. And I just wrote boutique hotel because I think ultimately the regulations have to consider that and not your standard fare standalone hotel. It could be part of a mixed use. So we'll need to address that. When you talked about it, for instance, being in a pseudo square. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, that it's definitely going to be a special use item and there's going to be some restrictions and et cetera. Okay. I'm going to blow this up a little. We have to go back to it. Okay. All right. Laboratory and research facility. We had those in RO and LO, LIO. Is that okay? Otherwise, it yeah. was 25%. Yep. I'm good with that. Me too. Okay. And landscape, nursery, and greenhouses. We had that GB 50%. 
LIO 50% um, and otherwise um, not elsewhere. So what are people's thoughts on um, the GB zone and the LIO zone? Uh, uh, oh, I voted for the uh, GB because we have one, so and I yeah, think it's same. fine. I think I voted for that too. I don't know if I'd be against it. What was the percent? Oh, I see it. 50% for LIO. Yeah, yep. I don't have a problem with LIO either in landscape nursery. So you can go 75 there. Well, not 75, 60. 67, actually. Yeah, 67. 67 sorry. Point something, something. I didn't pay attention to math class. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what, what do you do for a living? <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, I write algorithms from hell, but you know, basic math is a challenge sometimes. <laughs> Laundromat. And I think we started to discuss this because no, no, sorry, laundromat's different. We had talked about dry cleaning earlier. So right now we have within the SH and the GB zones, and only three people responded. So that's why we're getting the 33%. Well, it's not that I didn't respond. It's that I, I said zero across the board. So there were no yeses. I mean, there were only three yeses or whatever. I mean, no, that, there was no way to right. respond if you wanted zero. <laughs> now, what, what happens if uh, related builds out and the town center um, would like to build the laundromat and up in that area? What would that, I'm sorry, Bonnie, what would the, uh, the uh, Sony that has, for that be if within tuxedo farms itself. Yeah, you all would have to, you would be working with the pig environment to that, that's another zone that will be defined. Yeah, that's they're they're operating on the PID special use permit. And right now they're grandfathered. The town was not going to continue to allow PIDs anywhere else. So, you know, if they came in, you would have to amend it. Okay. Their, their specific special use permit. So I'm kind of with Michelle on, I don't want a laundromat around here unless that specific, um, you know, scenario actually brought itself to the forefront. So it seems like we can still talk about that one, right? I, everybody else can chime in. I just, I think I put yes in Southfields because the apartments and yes. that's where yes. more of the renters are. There yeah. and also in the town center in Augusta place, you have folks, not all of whom might have laundry facilities. So that's why I think I put it in, in the town center and in Southfields. Uh, okay. because, um, there's, there's could be residents that don't have, um, washer and dryers in their homes. So I could definitely see the laundromat in Southfields. That's kind of a good argument. That's a good yeah. argument, and I agree with that on, yeah. on the base of that argument. Yeah. Now, GB, are you guys okay? I mean, three of you said, well, I guess it is okay because three of you said yes. Yes. So it comes down to actually, then that's it. We have SH and GB and not town center. Well, GB is, you know, contractor road. So, you know, it's not. That's true. Near it could the be, town center. Right. It's going to be kind want. of. Yeah, it's not the type of business we want on Route 17. Right. I mean, uh, at the town center of Route 17. Right, the main frontage. So light industrial use, you all had LIO and otherwise it was zero or 25%. Okay. Okay, multifamily dwellings. Uh, you had I don't think there's any disagreement. You were either, there were no 50% in oh, other words. You mean, sorry, you mean medical, medical offices. Medical offices. Oh, sorry, medical, medical offices. Sorry about that. Medical office. You're very clear cut on this one. Yeah. Figure we'll do this as I, we go along, then we won't forget. <laughs> right. I mean, I just, the reason that I put it in TB, I think that was me. Um, you know, if we're having lots of recreational outdoor activities and people whacking each other with swords and stuff, it seemed like a, a, a close dock in a box might not be the worst thing to have there, but I'm not going to fight, but I'm not going to fight for it. Just, that was my theory. 
So okay. what if it's like a little, I think we were talking about some uses that could be accessory to a resort situation. And maybe just having, well, I think it would be accessory. Well, I think you, I think you could argue that if there was like a little medical station in a resort, then that's just part of the resort. That's part of the resort. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm not worried about that kind of, this, this is, this is, you know, dock in a box or a doctor's office. Well, there's one right down the road in GB. We have one. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Plus okay. the, the Ren Fair has an on-site, uh, medical staff uh, yeah. yeah no this isn't first aid kind of stuff i mean that's different okay yeah i see what you mean jay okay so multi-family dwellings two people of three um well, really two people of four <laughs> well, because one person voted no anywhere <laughs> well but if you were voting no then you wouldn't have exed it yeah right? i mean if you I think voted that's the way you... it should have worked yeah, if you didn't say it was a good use, you were voting against it. There was no. Yeah, because for instance, here, this is four and there's zeros here. So I think that. But... Okay. Well, I'm thinking about this. Yeah, because there, it would have shown up differently. It would have shown that more people didn't respond. Okay. If I'm saying that right. Um, so right now, multifamily dwellings, a hundred percent, three people, this is indicating said, okay, in the SH zone in the Southfields Hamlet. So that's exclusive of the existing apartments. Now, remember, um, because those are in a residential zone. Um, and then in the GB zone, two people stated that it was okay in the GB zone. So I think. You need to, I don't know that we have to talk about Southfields, but I think we need to talk about the GV zone. Thoughts? Well, I mean, that's, it's kind of a loaded uh, issue. Well, I think, you know, the question is, do you want to allow it by right or, or by special use permit? Or do you want almost like a PID for there to be some mechanism where um, the town board has some discretionary authority over the multifamily dwellings? Yes, I agree with that. <laughs> so the reason I think I voted for that, and the reason is that in when you look at some of, there are some businesses that have apartment dwellings on top now like in the in the uh, in the plaza in the in the little shopping center where uh, where the deli is mm -hmm. things like that there are dwellings on top or offices but some people have apartments up there so I think that's why I put it in, I put it in in uh, so I those would, they might be yeah that would be more of a mixed use mixed, mixed multi-family yeah, family, yeah. So then, you know, I just had a misunderstanding. I the rather... multifamily in this instance is pure multifamily. Okay. So, uh, with... so the with... alternative, the alternative is if, again, whether it's SH, GB, or any, um, you don't have to allow these things outright. If you want some discretion over them, then you can handle it like a floating zone. The town, almost like, you know, not as complicated, but like you did with tuxedo farms you have the discretion to consider where it would land and you would still have parameters certain minimum lot size you might want to say you have to have some commercial use with it which was the premise behind tuxedo farms has to be on route 17 i mean you'll develop the parameters if you want to have more control over it can we have a separate uh, line for multi-use then and uh, you know, assuming that multifamily already is in Southfield, so we'll just leave it there. Uh, but then anything else that we want with apartments over retail would be multi use. I think we have that already in the residential zoning districts. Right. This is really the question of do we want to allow someone to decide to put up 
an apartment building or a line of condos in one of the larger lots along Route 17 that is currently zoned for general business, which is, you know. Well, I guess, I guess, I mean, our comprehensive plan says that what we're looking for, it, we're striving for non-residential rateables. So, you know, general business should be non-residential rateables. Okay. I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm good too. Me too. I am as well. So wait, we're not allowing it. <laughs> yeah, it's correct. Coming, yeah, we're not allowing out of GB. it. It's not allowing it in GB. Okay, and SH, we are going to allow it because that's where Red Apple Rest is. Again, yeah. we're not talking about the apartments. Is that do you want multifamily or do you want that for economic development? Let me bring up the map. I, I think I, I put it in there because I thought, well, they're already there, so whatever. But yeah, yeah, but I'd rather that's a residential that it be zone. something that would not be, you know, I'd rather that it be, you know, a rateable rather than residential. But I don't know how you guys feel. I so, think that's fine. We can keep it in R3. So this here, not allowing you to draw. Well, this right in here, this is are the apartments. The purple is basically right now non-residential. And so if you allow multifamily, you're saying that you're gonna allow it elsewhere. And again, I think if the intent was to allow non-residential, then we probably shouldn't allow it. I agree. I, I changed my vote. <laughs> okay. All right, so going back to, so this becomes, nope, okay. So no multifamily in the non-residential zones. This is multiple use non-residential development provided all uses are allowed in the TTC district. So, this was actually a use that was specific to the TTC zoning district. And it allowed in a single structure for multiple tenants. That was the intent. But I think this opens the question because of the way people responded. Are you allowed? Here's multiple use non-residential development, the definition. If you can see that. So it's really like yeah. little shopping centers, multi tenant buildings. So, but. And, and the TTC is, um, we would have to revise this because the GB, for instance, or the SH or the MB wouldn't necessarily allow the same uses in that zoning district. So if, if what you're saying is you don't have a problem with multi-use buildings, multiple tenant buildings in these various zones, then we have to restructure that use and just call it multiple uses. Uh, well, I think that that's, I think that's exactly what people were thinking it was. I don't think that we want to allow town center uses in other zones necessarily. But I think that if you have, if you were putting up a large building that is, you know, in keeping with, you know, standards and all the rest of it, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to have two or three smaller businesses occupying that space as opposed to one big business. So long as all of the uses being contemplated in the space are legal in the zone. So should we add that to the GB, the TB, and the NB zone? I think you've got to have it oh. in the NB zone. Otherwise, you can't do anything with that space. Right. But just my being loud doesn't mean that it's necessarily true. Well, I mean, that's sort of what's envisioned for NB is right. exactly that. So 
And I think that in, I mean, GB, that's, I mean, there you go. That's Duck Cedar Plaza right there, right? Right. So. Yeah. And for that matter, it could be a, a place in tourism business, but, you know. Yeah, I think we have to work on this part of it. But otherwise, you're okay with multiple use non-residential developments where there's more than one use on the property and in the building. Yep. Well, I mean, I mean, now that you've redefined what that means, isn't that sort of what could also happen in RO and LIO? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. I mean, yep. basically, all the stuff you've put in red in that definition, just, you know. Multiple non residential development provided all uses are allowed in the zone. Right. Or something like so that. What I'm, I'm looking at uh, for the tourism business, uh, I think we're primarily talking about the Renfair site. No? There's a lot of, I mean, there's, there's more space around there than just the Renfair. Okay. Well, okay. When I'm thinking about the Renfair space, because that's what I am thinking out. Uh, you know, are we talking about an accessory use? Uh, because you know, it, does this then make make this notion be the primary use of what could be on that site? Because you're allowing it that this could be now this is the primary use for that site so we've so forget about a resort hotel we see this as an allowable use and and that's what we're going to put there uh, does that open the door for that kind of thinking so because that would be a downside to me to just saying well it could be there so why don't we just uh i mean that's a that's a very specific large parcel that has a lot of potential that by just making it be open to just about anything uh, does exactly that, makes it open to just about anything. But it only makes it open to the things that are already allowed in that zone. Right, so, but I think that that loses the one opportunity for, for a, a game changer development as opposed to, uh, you know, just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. So I just want to, I just want to clarify looking back at the use table and it must have been the way that, um, survey monkey collated the uses, but multiple use non residential development in the, in the draft. Of the use and bulk requirements actually was allowed in the TTC. SH GB and it referred to the zoning district as far as the uses themselves. Um, sorry, not the GB, the, um, MB. So TTC SH and MB. And and GB. So where it wasn't contemplated is the tourism business, the RO and the LIO. And frankly, that was in part because of the more limited mix of uses. I think you've expanded the uses. So for instance, you know, if you were saying, okay, we could have potentially daycare here in a business park, then you might have that on the same lot as an office building. So I think by expanding the uses within the zones themselves, it probably makes sense to allow more than one on an individual lot. Right. And I don't think that all the, all the, Business folks that I've dealt with when they're learning developers, they're not going to have, you know, they're going to go with the use that is the, the, has the most value. And if that means, you know, I, I'm not sure that just because they can put two uses on a site, unless that increases the value and attractiveness of their project, they're not going to do it. Right. And now we're reading your email. There you go. <laughs> Are you? No, be careful. You've been scrolling. You're sharing your screen as opposed to the. Yeah, no, I know. The, uh, the, the actual application. So when you scroll around. I was moving it over. Okay. So I just want to make, didn't want you to do it by accident. I appreciate that. <laughs>
Yeah, and I was also scrolling because I wanted to get to the definition for personal service. So, so I think I'm still, where are we with the TV zone, the tourism business? And well, I, I think that's. I guess I'm just, uh, maybe if we had a better definition of what we mean by this now. I mean, I know, I mean, I could see it in RO, LIO. I mean, I suppose in tourism business, it could be small businesses like REI and you know, outshoot so, of Camp Moore or something. I, I'm it's, not it's sure kind of, what means. It's, it's kind of, Michelle, like the typical, it's, it is almost like a shopping center. Mm. Or it also could be, in theory, a business park where you have multiple buildings. Right. And multiple I mean, uses on the same property. Because here it talks about building or buildings providing for a variety of retail, commercial, and or and other non-residential uses, as may be allowed in the zoning law managed as a unit which shall have the following characteristics unified architectural treatment and signage an identifiable theme relating each of the commercial establishments within so you're not going to have a hodgepodge of signs you know you're going to have uniform signage they're going to have shared parking and site circulation uh, they'll have shared utilities um, shared amenities common spaces so maybe what we need to do is just uh, review, as we will, after we do all these uses, what we're allowing in tourism business and see if it makes sense. If, if we yeah. can envision right. the uses we're saying and envision could there be a strip mall of these uses or not. Right. Maybe we kind or, of or a building with multiple, but it's uses. not necessarily a strip mall. It's like right. the it could also be like the tuxedo mercantile building down there in the middle of town, which is currently doing this. I mean, yes. if you're thinking about the rent fair site, if they suddenly decided to do something different with where they put their offices and took those really good 70s hexagonal buildings and made them into individual stores, mm. they would need this. They would need to have this use allowance to be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, they used to be tourism related businesses. They were like, they sold ski equipment and ski clothes and each one was a different store. Right. But, you know, if it was one of them, if they were different stores and a restaurant and all the rest of it, that's the kind of thing we're talking about here. Well, well I think the resort an, allows it. Would that be an accessory to the what what the primary purpose of what you're hoping would be developed there? That that's my point. Yeah, I think I think to your point, Ken, if it's a resort or what we're calling a resort lodge, then those uses would end up being accessory to the overall principal use as a resort. Yeah, I mean but, if you had a ski store up there and they were selling skis, I don't think anybody'd have a problem with that. No, you but know? if but you know, think about what happens when you drive into Greenwood Lake and you're coming to the lake, which is the big draw, and you come down uh 17A there, you have several places where you have several different businesses in a single building or on a single lot, and this would allow that. Yeah, but I, I'm seeing that on 17, which is, a, you know, a mile away, you know. I'm, I'm, this just seems like a special opportunity to me. Uh, I, I, that's all I'm going to say, you know. I, I'm hearing your point. I'm just saying I, I think now we're watering down what, what the potential of this is by letting it be just about anything, as opposed to it being an accessory to, to a primary use that we're hoping to promote. And and I think as Howard said, you know, stuff can change. So you know, uh, down the road. But uh, what are we trying to promote at this very unique site? And 17A, as, as has been talked about in the uh, in the comprehensive plan, as being this basic one zone that we have for tourism business. If I'm the lone voice there, let it be. I don't. What can I say? No, I, I think, no, I, I hear what you're saying, Ken, and that's sort of the way I was, as I said, I looked at this, is what, what how do we want each of these zones to be identified? You know, well, we, since we have limited. Sounds like to me from the, the amount of discussion over it needs to be put to the side. Yeah, because multiple uses in the TV zone, there was only one person 
who had supported it. Oh. I'm not going to be able to no, decide. Right now. I'm going to I'm going to contemplate what Ken just argued as well. So. So this uh, one's up in the air. I would say it would be. I mean, it's eating up a lot of time. We have a lot of questions outstanding. Okay, so we'll leave that open. Okay. Okay. Personal service commercial uses, and those are you know nail salon, hair salons, travel agency, etc. That's typically personal service. So it looks like TB um, was the only place where, well, actually, I mean, it's either seventy five percent, twenty five percent. Adding your vote, Dave, isn't going to change the outcomes. Um, and personal service commercial uses, I believe, are allowed accessory to the resorts. Perfect. So it's not that you wouldn't allow it. It's just it's associated with um, a particular use. Okay. Okay. So um, public outdoor amusement or entertainment. And the definition is. Temporary season, temporary seasonal public outdoor gathering for amusement or entertainment purposes, circuses, outdoor concerts, carnivals, fairs, similar events allowed only upon special use of permit approval by the town board. This use is always encompassed um, the Ren Fair and the Ren Fair activities. That's the special use permit that you gave them to operate. So that's the use. And so you have 75% in the TV and elsewhere, obviously, um, zero. Zero. zero or one person. So this means that if Duck Cedar wants to host the Shriners Carnival with a bunch of uh, merry-go-rounds and tilt-a-whirls and booths, they can't do it. I believe we created an alternative for that. Kind of um, short duration events, Jay. How is where does it say that this is of this isn't of short duration? I mean, I believe you, but says, where is it? it? Says seasonal. Seasonal could be a longer time. Yeah, yeah, no, seasonal allows you to be longer, but seasonal could also be you know one day if it's you know or you know. So the duration of time is approved by the town board when you issue the special use permit. Okay. So I but, think I put yes on the town center because we have like the you know celebrations there for the whole town. Like we have the you know the Memorial Day parade. We have the the whole library thing. Um, so that's why I put it there because it's already happening, right? I thought that that was being handled like through some kind of event law. Like three days limitations. Jay, you're um, muted. Thank you. Let's. I, I'm good with that. If we can, ha if we have some sort of you know special assembly permit kind of thing, um, let's just make sure we remember to put that in the zoning. Okay. Well, there might, it has to be somewhere, right? Because the library comes every year for a permit to have their um, Memorial Day picnic. Yes. It has to be somewhere. Has to be somewhere, but if it's in the zoning, we have to make sure it stays in the zoning. Right. And I don't know where it is. Now I'm just going to real quick go through this. This is your code. And we'll figure it out if we don't see it immediately. There's a lot of things like filming. There's a lot of things that we have special permits for. Right. Here's your filming. All right. So we'll have to make sure that that's there somewhere. Okay. So I have special assembly as a note here and I got to put it in my notes in general. Okay. Uh, public utilities. Can we really regulate? I mean, what can we actually regulate? Yeah, I, really, it should be allowed in most zoning districts. 
because public yes. utilities is all encompassing. <laughs> but this isn't this isn't just wires and poles and stuff. That's infrastructure. This is, uh, you know, substations and cell towers and cell towers will be regulated um, separately. For sure. Yes, the, the, but they still need to be allowed. Public utility. Except for petroleum pipelines. So this, in, this is electricity. Well, that's why gas. we became a village. Yeah. So should we take petroleum out? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's in there. Take it out. They can sue us. I mean, this seems like uh I think we could take steam out. I don't know that there's much steam going on. This is that would make definition. SOS uh not a legal use though, right? SOS? No, SOS, SOS is, is not a depot. This oh. is this is a public utility. So this is uh, Orange and Rockland or the cable company or. Right. or exactly. Know. So we'll take out petroleum and steam if that's okay. Okay. Is there any way, I mean, what we want obviously are utilities that serve the town, not like pipelines that just run through the town. Is there a difference there? I don't know that you can. That's going to be very difficult to regulate. Okay. Because, you know, O and R or uh, you know, Con Ed or any of these big utility lines, they're not just serving the town. And I don't know that you have control over it. And they exist already. Like the sub some of the substations we have and some of the transmission lines we have already. Yeah, well, I mean, we have what is that by the bank, Dave? Um, that's the, the uh, that's, the, that's the Comcast Northeastern hub. It, it's the so hub it. and, and we, and they don't provide any service to the town. You, you, Comcast isn't, uh, you know, an option for town people. Isn't that the, they've got the Northeast it's, hub. To me, it sounds like it's, it's, it's something that, uh, that can be opposed upon the town anyway. It sounds like we're just checking the boxes. I, I don't know, just to uh, kind of say we're permitting it as if we really have much say on that anyway. No, but it's important that we permit it and then we make it a special use and then we have say over things like siting and screening and and architectural stuff. You got to make that substation look like you know, a little stone cottage, which you can't see in the window. Okay, but so by putting those X's there, that indicates that those other stipulations are going along with that? This is just that it's going to be allowed in the zone. I have to add what's SU, they're gonna all be SUPs. By the way, I think Comcast is the parent company of Optimum. So for those of us that have Optimum as cable, our cable provider, we are, you know, we are uh, <laughs> yeah, served by Comcast. Uh, Comcast is Spectrum and Optimum is all T, so they're two separate things. Oh, yeah, you're right. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, but what's the reason that, that Comcast isn't trying to provide service? I mean, we haven't told them not to. Well, the, the reason is because we have a franchise uh permit with them we've, we've gotten a franchise deal for 10 years at a time it's been going on and the language within the franchise agreement uh, you know prohibits us from from courting someone else but it doesn't mean that it's not off the table and we just we just found out about what that building does in the last year um and it, since it's a hub then i'm certain it could you know the service level in tuxedo would increase as well so that's for another discussion, but certainly we should we should put that on the table later on. Yeah, yeah I agree. Especially if they want that permit renewed. Yeah. Well, yeah, and they apparently don't even uh, make pilot payments to the town. Nothing. They don't. They and they've been there for almost 25, 30 years now. Yeah. So I think that you know, Bonnie, if you wouldn't mind making a 
just a, a note, note there that we can, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the Millennium Pipeline, I believe, pays a pilot. And uh, I thought I thought the other utility does, but for some reason they got away with it and we need to rectify that. So the note you want just to, to remember pilots or? Yeah, pilots, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, special okay. use permits, perfect, and pilots, perfect. Okay. Um, resort Lodge. Uh, for the most part, across the board, um, you weren't going to allow it, except in the tourism business zoning district. Two individuals did propose it in Southfields. I remember. I remember. Again. I'm sorry, Ken. Go ahead. I was just thinking, what property was in mind in Southfields? Was it the Red Apple Rest site, or? Yes, for me, I was one of the people that said that, and I thought that we had talked about perhaps that would be a good use for that property. Like I think we did. Kind of place. Right, yeah, five years ago, there was actually a plan in front of us, but the owner, I guess, didn't agree on a price. So I agree, it probably should be there as well. So then I think it also raises the question. Was that it has to have some kind of a, an activity associated with it, typically for a resort lodge, as opposed to a, a hotel. A hotel, right. And I think that was the main difference that with the requirements, it was a lower density guest room requirement and it had higher amount of open space and um, resort type uses, including recreation that was attached to the resort use. So mm -hmm. I thought that the hotel, which can have many of the same you know, accessory uses would take care of that. Yeah, I think if they could figure out a, a, a resort activity that could go along with space, fine. So, uh, I mean, it still maintains the notion of tourism and hospitality. And, you know, I don't know if we need to worry about the scope of what the resort. But I think the whole notion of the resort, though, is you, you don't necessarily have to be staying at the hotel to use the uh, the amenity that might be that uh, recreational um, which, you know, I, I guess if it was the Red Apple site, since they back up to Harriman State Park, I, I would imagine I was gonna say that hiking. hiking could be yeah, what. But, but then um, that's really, but then that's really a hotel if they're not yeah. putting the, re the recreation on it. I mean, I don't see uh, me personally, and, I, and I'll stop talking about it in a second is uh, I'm okay with it being checked as a resort lodge, but I'm not so sure that, that there's, uh, uh, you know, enough space there to, uh, as opposed to, you know, the tourism business site, but so it doesn't restrict it for me. I just don't see it as nope. really all that, uh, probable. So Over. then. Again, cause I think yeah. hotel, a hotel can have a pool, a hotel can have little yeah. conference space. A hotel can have many things that are like a resort. The resort was intended was special and intended for the tourism business in part because there's more land there to create a, something that's truly resort. How about a spa? Does that fall in resort? You're allowed a spa. Okay, so there's a use right there, right? And right. That could be part of a hotel. And, and, that, and like Ken says, I agree with Ken. I don't think there's enough room there to, to do a Wolf Lodge type of thing. But yeah, so, yeah, unless, unless you decide that you're going to buy the the motel and new pharma and those three houses there and put that parcel together in a single use and have enough land to do something bigger. Uh, right? Yeah, so, I agree with that, yeah. I think it would come before the town board if they had such a vision, but you know, I, I'm not gonna bicker about it, but uh, I'm my good. vote would be to, to uncheck that box. That would be my vote, how about that? Over. To uncheck it? Uncheck it for me, yeah, I'll, I'll uncheck it. I think they'll right. come before before the board. I, I'll just leave it at that. My vote will be unchecked. So, but let me add. Let me ask this of the board members. Then, if we look at Hickory Hollow, um, which is slightly bigger property, could that be more of a resort with more outdoor recreation, or is because that I think is bigger than um, Red Apple Rest? Yeah, they're they're at about um, twelve acres, I believe. Um, Oh, 
Well, uh, didn't we have a discussion at one point saying that if, uh, somebody wanted to propose that use? That, you they know, could come in, front, let them come before us. Wouldn't that be a better way to. They will not. If it's not in the zoning, we have said we don't want it. So, sure, if someone's got a really, really great idea. And maybe this is the only place it'll work. They'll come before us. But if we've said we don't want this in this area, they're not going to come to us. They're going to go up the street another, you know, twenty miles to some place that's perfectly happy to, to to have it. I think you're checking that, Bonnie. I think it was nineteen acres, actually. Um, yeah, this is sixteen acres. 16. This, that piece for this year. So what, I mean, what, what are we saying that we're going to allow? Is the question before us, are we going to allow resort large lodges in the general business? Is that what we're saying? Right. Yeah. Southfields, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah Southfields, I, I, Southfields, I think we took, oh, sorry. I think we were talking about the GB zones. All the other zones. We said we weren't allowing necessarily resort lodge and Southfields. We're allowing a hotel, which will have many of those same functions. The resort lodge was again, it requires a larger site and the only really zone that has that's that's non residential that would have, you know, a fairly big site is Hickory Hollow and that's 16 acres. So we would have to allow it in order to allow it for Hickory Hollow. We'd have to allow it in anything in the G. Yeah. Well, that's why I thought we had decided well, not to do a blank. It, it, well, it, it is subject to a minimum lot size requirement. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Got so, it. so it couldn't be just any because we need enough land to be able to do the recreational part. Okay. Okay. And all again, right. I'm throwing it out there. You actually all didn't necessarily check it out. But I'm just raising it. So a ski resort. Somebody buys the ski lot, the ski area, and they put a hotel up in uh, Red Apple Rest. That's not a resort anymore. It's a hotel, but it does sponsor a resort at a different location. It'll be called a resort, right? Hmm. Even though it's physically not on the property at a separate location. Because that's I'm just thinking that, that, that's what I think you're gonna find here happening in Tuxedo in the future. You know, we get limited that availability over there in the uh, in the tourism and business uh, tourism zone. Um somebody might want to put a hotel there because it's on the main drag and then bust their people there. Something like that. Uh, I would say that, but if that's going to happen, then really those, you know, that's going to be two parcels. One's going to be outdoor recreation. One's going to be a hotel. And this isn't really about whether they can call it the tuxedo ski resort or whatever. The, the resort hotel use is, you know, a whole complex that's the hotel and the recreation all in one spot is sort of how it's written in the definition. So, where we stand on this, we're talking about um, general business resorts, right? Right. I think we got away from it. So, did we? So, can we get in? Uh, I. Again, I think that in that in general business, this is a this is fine. They're all special use. It's a special use use, so it has to have the right acreage. It has to have the right amenities. It has to have the right screening. I see that. You know, I think that if we're trying to draw tourism, the Route 17 corridor is a is a fine tourist corridor as well, both driving and people who arrive on the train. And so I'm good with it. I'm going to have a long way to go with. I'm good with it. Yeah, I, and I'm right there with you on that. So I'm good with that. What Jay said. Red apples about six point seven acres, plus or minus. 
actually, I think I added, uh, yeah. And may I have need to belabor it for my, my satisfaction. It's, it's, all of these things have more more considerations than just whether we declare it uh, a specific category, correct? Yes. I, I think the, Jay's point was if it's not in our comprehensive plan catalog, when they when builders look, they're going to go right by tuxedo. I think it's important that it be in there. Uh, that was part of my argument anyway. Yeah. Well, we said we said hotels are allowed in Southfields for sure. I think it comes down to the resort. Yeah, and I, I would be happy with letting that go through planning board, you know, and whatever it has to go through to justify it. I mean, I, I don't think I want to close the door on any ideas. That's what I'm saying. I mean, right. certainly the, there, there's criteria to be met. But So if we're talking about minimum acreage, we're really only talking about a couple of properties. We would have to set it if we're going to allow it in the SH and the GB. We'd have to set it lower oh. if we want those to comply. Well, so we would set it like around five acres. What we At, or again, it's possible if you want to make it happen, you're going to have to bump up a couple of properties and, and unsubdivide them, right? Cool. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be about five acres. To be able to create the multiple properties, we're we're not going to get twenty five acres. I think twenty five acres or so may be the minimum right, right now. Um, we're not going to get that in Southfields, and we won't get that in the maybe. The, no, I don't think the GB zone either. So we will have to reset some of the criteria. And GB, you know, we're really aren't we looking at Hickory Hollow, and they have sixteen acres. So yeah. could we say in GB it has to be 12 acres minimum? Yes, we could set different sizes because we have the use and bulk table set up so that each use has its own bulk standards. So we could set them up differently. Right. So I'd be comfortable, I don't know how everybody else feels, saying in GB a minimum of 12 acres in Southfields if you're saying red apple rest is six acres, then a minimum of five or six acres. I mean, so to I allow it in those zones. In yeah. those. I wouldn't define the bulk regulations now. No, I think, I, I think we're focusing on the use first. Right. For but sure. yes, we can go through it as we're putting together the, the requirements. We can definitely. Right. We'll have to be mindful just for location. Applying. Right, we'll have to be mindful that it could be in three zones as opposed to one zone. Okay. Okay. Uh, business office right. accessory to resort that is going to ultimately mirror wherever we allow resort. <laughs> we were, this is talking about. Uh, the business office that's common to any hotel, right? Yes. Or we talk right. about something more than that. No. Common to uh, like a hotel. Then it should be uh, accessory to a hotel, not to a resort. So if somebody puts a hotel up someplace, someplace else, they can still have a business office. So we could do resort hotel. Right, and then it should pretty much be any place there's a resort or a hotel. No argument. Yep. yep. Agreed. I mean, and it's accessory use, so it's you know. Yep. So we got it. So we're just adding this component. A uh, restaurant to accessory to a principal use. So again, the thought that resorts can have a restaurant. Um, right now for sure, TTC, SH, and TB allow it. GB did not, RO did not, LIO did not, and 50% for NB. Well, we need to talk about NB because that's the only one we have to really talk about. Well, we need a restaurant anywhere way we can get them. <laughs> so we're talking about a restaurant accessory, accessory to a principal use. Principal this use. is a lunch room in a business, a, a, because like in, a, in an office building, right? Right, right. Because we also have separately restaurant sit down and restaurant takeout. Right. Okay. So 
So this is just the coffee shop in the middle of an office park. Or some, it could be a sit down restaurant. A, a, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, a small, small place to sit down, yes. A Starbucks? Could be. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you would want one of those, but okay. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> So do we want to make accessory in the RO and the LIO? I would. Me too. I, that was my that was my 25%. Okay. Um, if you wanted accessory to a principal use, I actually don't know that you wouldn't do it across the board for GB and for NB as well. I agree to that. I would. Yep. What do you got? What does everybody think? I'm I'm with I'm with you on that. I I I'm agree. Okay. The principal use in GB. I mean the landscape places. Uh, it could be well. We're adding resort lodge now. It could uh, be a hotel. It could yeah. be uh, the hotel. Uh, it could as be we've an expanded, office. right? If we as we've expanded the uses for some of these zones, then it could be potentially accessory to a primary use. But wouldn't a resort automatically have a, a restaurant? I mean, it's, uh, that's not even an accessory. But that's just me. Yeah, but a hotel might not. You know, the sit-down breakfast in the hotel, if they have it. If somebody mentioned specifically resort, but okay. Put your check, no problem. Okay. Restaurant sit down with the exception of RO and LIO, you would allow it everywhere. Okay, that's good. And now, but, but just wait a second before we take it out of RO and LIO again. We'll have it as accessory. But accessory is different. Accessory means I've got a building like say We have we had only one vote in those use in those areas. Okay. Gotta move on. Um same thing with restaurant takeout. You were across the board except for R O and L I O. I'm good with that. Retail and wholesale trade and landscape materials, landscape nursery and greenhouses. Are you going to change those restaurant ones to X's? Yes, I did. Okay, it's not showing on my screen yet. For oh, whatever okay. Reason. Bonnie? Yes. What I'm what I was concerned, is I think I was the one that put R O and L I O at the takeout. Yes. Because I thought, well, what are these the people that work in these businesses? They had to have to eat someplace. Are they just going to drive all the way to town to eat, or there's no if there's somebody that wants to put in a takeout place by there? That's not going to work. Now we have it as a principal restaurant accessory to a principal use. Yeah. Oh, never. Okay, got it. So you can't just have a standalone restaurant, but if you have an office, you can have a restaurant, in other words, as part of that complex. That's what the intent is. <laughs> yep. Um, retail and wholesale trade and landscape materials, landscape nursery and greenhouses. And this is landscape nursery and greenhouses. So frankly, I don't know if there was a difference. That one was just more descriptive. Well, maybe maybe it's it's uh, leveraging cultivation as well. And that second one, so greenhouses is the trigger keyword, right? Do you, yeah, you one is more that? one is more retail, and the other one's wholesale. Right. Um, Could wind up with a big farm of greenhouses. Yes, because of the wholesale trade nature. So I think Hickory Hollow could be considered both retail and wholesale. Would that be correct? That's correct. So two people said it was okay in the GB, and I think if, if we're going to allow them to continue in that use, you would want to have them in the GB zone. Great. 
Yeah. So, so then every the other zones, you weren't going to have it in the town center. You weren't going to have it in Southfields. Um, not in tourism business, not in MB, basically nowhere else. Retail uses, period. Except for RO and LO, um, you're allowing in all the other zoning districts. Either at 75% of you agreed or 100% of you agreed. What's the boundary again of the LIO district, zoning district? LIO is light industrial and RO is research office. Yeah, I know. Well, what's the, what's the defined geography for LIO and tuxedo? Oh, there's uh, only one. It's that it's, it's, it's one corner of 80 something acres on Long Meadow Road that really the ownership is still up uh, undetermined. So, based on the uh, tuxedo farms deal, I, I think that's that's something we're hoping for at some point. But to my understanding, it hasn't even really materialized yet. Yeah, okay. and just as a reminder, we were actually trying to make the RO and the LIO one at one point in time, but we left the LIO in because we didn't want to mess up the special use permit for Tuxedo Farms, which is why we left LIO in. But we were trying to create one zone because um, it didn't make sense to have two, but we then I, I agree with what's on the, on the X's oh. there. So RO okay. and LIO can be blank, yeah. Okay. Yep. Seasonal farm market um, across the board, yes, except for the RO and LIO. Agreed, right? Yep, agree. It's good you're here, Dave, because now we can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> now we have all of you here, at least for the second half. Stables, commercial, and riding academies. We had that potentially in the tourism business, um, but really nowhere else. Is that reasonable? I think only so. Other place. Again, I would think that you could have anything would be in GB, only because that's a, enough of a parcel size that maybe you could get one, but that's the only other place. Yeah, I agree okay. with that. Okay. Uh, sustainable business park, that was really intended. Um, so when we were coming up with the tourism business zoning district, um, some of the board members wanted to allow a little bit more flexibility in the uses, but then the quid pro quo was that it would be part of a sustainable business park. And so th that was in part why multiple uses also, they would be part of a business park and a couple of other uses would be allowed that normally aren't allowed in the tourism business park. Um, so this was very specific to the, um, tourism business zone, but it's interesting that for the MB for and the LIO, you all thought that that would be reasonable. And only one vote in the tourism. That's interesting. So, I mean, the whole premise of the RO and the LIO is that it's going to be business parking, right? I mean, yeah. so, I mean. I think, I think the question is, so the way this was written, the special use permit for a sustainable business park is you had to have um, green design. It wasn't just that you could do a business park. You had to have energy efficiency. You had to incorporate something which was what would allow you to go in the tourism business. And you were only allowed a maximum of, I think, 24 acres because of the fact that we didn't want the entirety of the tourism business zone to suddenly become just sustainable business park business uses. So it was limited in size. So sustainable business park, it, is it eco reclamation? Is that what this would be focused on? Um, it's, it's focused on um, green technologies. Let me see if I can, let me get to the. I started looking it up and I probably shouldn't have because I've kind of got off on a. Yeah. It says, uh, you know, uh, reclaiming metals and plastics, recycling, so on and so forth, eco 
state stuff. So it's just, I want to see what your, your definition is. So, so these are the actual special use permit standards for it. And again, because it was really something unique to the tourism business zone to allow some other use than tourism businesses that you could create a sustainable business park, but that you wouldn't occupy more than 25 gross acres within the tourism business district. Okay, I see. I got it now. Yep. And then you had to, you just couldn't be a business park. You had to be green in design because of where you were located. Okay, so, so that's what I saw the eco thing. Okay. Yep. That, that yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And so the other thing was that what you would be allowed in this sustainable business park, um, that in the tour, which isn't just allowed in the tourism business district was offices, warehouses, wholesale warehouses and building contractor establishment. So you were opening the door to other uses in the tourism business district provided it was no more than 25 acres. So it's different from a business park. It was something specific and um, just to allow something alternative in the tourism business zoning district gotcha so i so i so i think fundamentally the question is ne not necessarily allowing it in all the other zones but are you okay still with allowing a sustainable business park in the tourism business zoning district that's a good one <laughs> it really and again is. because it's allowing business contractors it's, it's allowing some other things, but then it was going to be basically a green, attractive business park and no more than 25 acres. So that you wouldn't end up all the land in the TB for that use because you really want to still encourage resorts and other things. So I guess it just gives the property owner another way to maybe make uh, the tourism business zone a little more palatable to them to allow them this as well. Yeah, there's only really one owner, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, they, but they could subdivide off 24 acres, 25 acres. Right. And, they, could, and yeah. they would make money off of that. And that person could do a sustainable business park subject to special use permit review and site plan by the, the planning board. Um, but yes, it was to just provide some alternative to pure tourism business uses. Well, if it's only 25 acres, I guess I didn't realize that when I was, didn't put a vote in. Right. I don't know. Well, I'll, I, I believe that I agree with uh, including it in TB, so. I'll be clear, I don't, so I'll just say it as that. You don't? Yeah, I, do not, no. I don't either, but I would put it in the other areas that were contemplating business park things. But so making this, other business parks ha make them have to be sustainable? Well, everything should be as sustainable as possible. Actually, um, I think we need to make sure that there's the ability to make a business park type structure in the business park areas, which would be RO and LIO, mm -hmm. which isn't the only one that is currently sort of envisioned is the sustainable business park. Quite frankly, I think that most of the sustainable rules tend to be high on virtue signaling and pretty and low on functionality, but that's a different three beer conversation. So I think we achieve business park by allowing this multiple use non residential development in those zoning districts. Sure, but we just put that in this afternoon. <laughs> right, right. Well, like I said, because sustainable business park was something that was unique to. The, okay. the TV zone. In that and case, so I, think, I vote against the sustainable business parks anywhere. Okay. Right. With that okay. argument, I have to agree with Jay. That's a, that was a good point. So now you have 10, 10 Jay and Dave that are negative on that. So boom. No way. <laughs> well, I mean, I thought we were just talking as an allowed use, not that a business park in RO or LIO has to be sustainable. Right. right. Uh, everything, the problem with this is sustainable anything is that the def definition of what sustainable means is unworkable well, we and varies from minute to minute. So let's have business parks and let's not put 
unnecessary conditions on them. We had put very general That's though. Condition. We we to make it different. Sustainable business park shall demonstrate that it achieves the following: conserves water resources, minimize stormwater runoff, uses recycled building materials, incorporates alternative energy systems, incorporates energy efficient utility. They were broad enough, broad enough, and dodges in landscape materials. Frankly, I think all that should be incorporated incorporated into any development. Yeah, that's in, what in I'm the best of all worlds, like best practices. But that was specific to why it was called the sustainable business park. Right. And I don't think these aren't, just... these aren't heavy lifts, you know, in the grand scheme of things. They're, we're not saying be lead certified, for example. Well, uh, right, absolutely. Although, you know, don't get me started on lead certified either. My point is, this was a this was a use that was developed specifically to be able to sneak a business park into the tourism business district. Not to sneak, to be overt. <laughs> yes. Not it was a way. It was a not way. It was a way. It was a way of though um, allowing some additional uses that wouldn't be allowed in the tourism business zone. So that's that's what I would say for sure. Uh, right. Agreed. So, so, so long as you make some, you know, so long as you paint it green, you can put a business park in the tourism business. Not to exceed twenty five acres. Yes. Right. Right. We got we got places for business parks. We should put the business parks there. Everything okay. I've heard. Every time I say something about anything that isn't even the slightest bit. You know, isn't entirely tourism business. I hear I, that it shouldn't be in the tourism business zone. I don't understand why this is even being contemplated there. I don't either. Well, I don't understand me, why. Why are we I not mean, allowing wait, it? I, I want to stick for a second. I, I've really been trying to be patient, and uh, I, I, there seems to be no control over the microphone, so I'm going to interject. You know, what makes Tuxedo unique? Uh, is is the forested area and you know this tourism business thing to me is trying to put those two worlds together everything we we're going to just throw everything into that soup of tourism business to me it's lost any of that vision that's that's a, that's how i'm going to put it over i agree well i think I we have three people that have said no tourism no sustainable business park well, I, I just guess I have to understand why not an RO and LIO? Have a business park in RO and LIO. It's if not necessarily sustainable. If you want to build in some best practices for sustainability into the special permit, fine. But what makes a sustainable business park different than a regular business park? Building in those other practices. So? Well, I mean, I, I mean, if somebody says, you know, they build sustainable business parks and around the country, and that's what they want this to be known as, because that's what they want to have um, support all these green can, energy. But uh, but then they can they could just do that. There's nothing right. stopping them from doing it. The question is whether we're going to mandate the green infrastructure techniques, which well, is I, what the sustainable that, was doing. Right. I didn't think that by checking it off in RO and LIO meant that they had to be sustainable. I just thought, you know, it would be allowed. Well, Not yeah, by saying multiple uses, we're going to refer to business parks and that they would just be allowed. Okay. I mean, a real business park is like if you go to Park Ridge, they, the park is in the business. The way it's designed functionally, it's attractive. Like, Park Ridge. I know I forget the name of that area. It's where like a lot of the corporate buildings are. I think for Mercedes and some other places. And it's designed. It's landscaped cohesively. They have the hotel there. You know, there's a variety of uses in the business park. It was planned like that. Also yes, in so Mawa, like Mawa over by Rampo Ridge, that was kind of developed as a corporate park. How about like Ram uh, MacArthur Boulevard area? Exactly. Yeah. That's Rampo Ridge area. That's exactly right. Although, and we, uh, although we, just, saying we don't want that. We we want people to put in a business park, and that's fine. The 
sustainable business park was painting the idea of business park green so that it could get fit into the zoning for the t- for the tourism area and allow some additional uses i see okay yeah but but uses that we wouldn't allow otherwise so got it so we'll just make sure to talk about business park when we talk about multiple uses um tourism related retail sales are retail sales, rental or merchandise use and tourism related businesses, limited to recreational equipment sales, rental of indoor outdoor recreational equipment, recreation clothing, outfitter and guided services. So it was to allow some limited retail within the tourism business zone. That was the intent. Okay. Um, because otherwise a lot of the other uses just allow retail. So tourism related retail was specific again another one of those uses specific to the tourism business zone but we've already allowed retail general retail use in that zone yeah i was just gonna say i'm not happy with that but okay so this is this is really moot to the extent that if you're going to allow here's your retail uses if you're allowing them in the ttc the sh the gb the tb and the mb you don't need to have them specific to tourism correct right. correct yeah i just i i didn't again I, if the retail use on line 50 under tourism business was as you know part of what this resort would look like i i wouldn't want that box checked under tourism business because that's an allowable use uh, that's my, that's my concern. You know, that could just become the use for the site rather than as part of a bigger, a bigger plan. That's my concern. Well, and that's true. So what's to stop someone from putting a shopping center in there? Because a shopping <laughs> center. That's permissible. Then please uncheck that box. Yeah. Because a shopping I mean, center would need a special use permit and we're not going to, I mean, but I, I, I would not rely on the special use. Okay, um, so I'm going to say, why is why is having a shopping center, which there are plenty around already, I don't see why anyone would build one, but why is having a shopping center any different than what the rent fair is now, which is a fancy shopping center with costume employees? No, it is not. It <laughs> is too. What do you do when you go there? Can that we- is an entertainment venue. Mm-hmm. How about this? Can we take out retail use line 50 and TB and put tourism related retail sales in TB on line 54? Just to I think see. that's what I would I think that's what you should do if you don't want to see shopping centers in the TB zone. Yeah, the I, way it was. Okay. Okay, by me. And are you okay with that? I think we're good. Because, Ken, that's what you wanted. Yeah. Okay. Warehousing, for the most part, not allowed anywhere except for um, definitely in the LIO and then 50% set in the RO. Why wouldn't you allow warehousing along the Route 17 card? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I I think I think it should be there in RO. So there's your uh, in RO, yeah. I RO and LIO. Well, RO RO is not um, 17. That's GB is 17. Yeah, GB, RO yeah. is 17A. And that's fine too. GB is 17, right? But why wouldn't you put? Why wouldn't you? What's the difference between having a warehouse there or a giant dirt pile? Well, how many people wanted it there? One. So there we go. Wait, so I'm that's sorry. Stop. That's not, fine. If if people don't want it, that's fine. But this is but answer me the question. Why don't you want it there? Because there's it. warehousing is what's happening up in Montgomery and people are freaking out about it. And we just it's not part of the you know, there's I don't know. It's just not part of the vision. But we're allowing warehousing in the town on on roads that mean that the, in order to get to any of the RO or LIO zones, you're driving up Route 17 and hanging a left. 
or driving down Route 17 and hanging a right. So it's not limiting the traffic or anything on 17 of trucks or you know, Eagle Valley Road, I guess. So if you allow it in more places, you are expanding it. Period. Let me be clear about that. So, and, and I'm not going to explain it. I don't like it. That's it. Period. Ken, did you say anywhere? Yeah, I don't like it. I, th I think it's anti what I would hope. Tux I didn't move to Tuxedo hoping they were going to build warehouses here. No, that's that's I think Tuxedo is a very special place. I don't want warehouses next to the Grand Canyon and I don't think we need it in Tuxedo. That's how I feel. And that's that's as much as I'm going to say. So, which is fine. I just checked then... off. I checked off X because the LAO had four votes. Yeah, but so, but the so question so is, do we want, so let's go back to a basic question. Do we want it anywhere? If I we're going to say that we don't want it in Tuxedo, okay, and I can, I can get behind that, but if once we have it in Tuxedo, why isn't it? Okay. Is there a maximum size square footage? You could create one. Okay, that would be good. I mean, you could have... Yeah, you know, you have to be careful because it could be multi tenant. You might want to, you know, you may want to limit the number of bays, but. I kind of say it's kind of like why people would want this scrap in Tuxedo Park because it's ugly. And, you know, I really don't want it. I think it defeats this whole emerald wonderland of why what tuxedo is special about i don't i don't see it adding to our community in any way that's not completely fair because tuxedo park is is solely zone residential but okay you got your shot okay. thank you all right so it wasn't a shot it wasn't a shot uh if that's the way you want to interpret it go with it uh what about uh hypotheticals uh Amazon wants to put up uh, a million square foot warehouse in uh, on the 80 acres that we own in uh, in RO or LIO. No, well, we don't. We don't own it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do. No, we don't. Never happened. Really? Correct. Not yet. But okay. there was a certain time frame within which, if nothing had been constructed, I think they could offer it to you for a dollar. Well, no, right. I mean, but do you want warehouses? Do you want small? A uh, Ken is clear. He doesn't want warehouses at all. Sean threw out the potential, or not the potential, but the thought of a smaller warehouse if there was a way to restrict size. Um, the place where four people said that it would be okay as LIO. Um, Fifty percent said in the RO. Yes. I think you need to get the five of you, since you're all here, deciding on whether you want it or not and where. I obviously... One LIO is right on Longmeadow Road and the intersection of Warwick Brook Road. Yes. Have you been there? I, I really, I couldn't even imagine putting warehouses there. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, I, you know, I guess when I was thinking of it, Ken, I was thinking of that the topography would limit the size to be a very small warehouse. I mean, I does a warehouse. I, I guess do. warehouses have to be large. So in that case, warehouses have to, have to be large. So I would say no yeah. warehouses. Like they, they go somewhere else. Actually, they're smaller warehouses, would, Actually, they're they're smaller warehouses up in Montgomery. They don't have to be big. But whether you want to allow them or not is a different story. I would say that. I mean. Come on, we're not even having car washes. <laughs> this is this strikes me as I I tend to agree with Ken. If if uh, you know, we don't need to have warehouses as a use in tuxedo. They're all around the excuse me. And uh Yeah, okay. And that's fine. Yeah. But if we are going to allow warehouses in tuxedo, then the the only sensible locations are some of the larger properties along Route 17. After everybody saying, okay, 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 I took it out. Okay, no warehouses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got through that. Or the majority. Wholesale, which is somewhat related. I 
and it was included within warehouse use. So if you don't want warehouse, you probably don't want wholesale warehouse. <laughs> right. Right. That's your read in my mind. All right. Bye, W's. Except there's one W left: winery, brewery, distillery, or food processing. And that was definitely yeah, meant. That right now, come on. <laughs> so that's in the tourism <laughs> business. But you also all said, "Hey, a winery, brewery, distillery wouldn't be bad in the town center and Southfields, or the NB." You didn't see it in the RO and LIO. Fifty percent for the GB. So that's that's the primary question: is a GB. Whether you want to see whether you want to see one there. I don't know if I want to wine. I, I mean, first of all, you got to grow grapes to, to have it there. That's not going to happen. Uh, a brewery or distillery, that seems, why wouldn't, I guess, since there's no votes for RO and LIO, can one of you who surveyed please explain to me why that would be, why you did not vote for RO, or, especially in the case of a distillery or a brewery? I uh, I think I was tired by the end of that. I would say that I would actually say on consideration that that RO or LIO is a better spot for that than town center or Oh come on. But you know, I don't, I don't like those I don't like those hopsy craft beers. So I understand why it would go in town center. That's fine, but be careful. You don't necessarily want a distillery. We need to make sure that the that the Nuisance odors rules are strictly enforced. If I lived in Tuxedo I mean, and I can show it actually where on the map these ROs are. I, I, I don't I don't think we're really all that clear about what it's on what it's on seven in. it's seventeen A. It's the properties like where the the college was gonna be or that higher learning place, the Buddhist place. It's the the spaces that are um, at the yeah, right, that's right on Warwick Brook Road, the one you now have kind of centered. Yeah, the RO, I'm, I'm, yeah. That's I'm the Jehovah's that's that's precious location to me. Uh, I mean, research office. I don't know what that notion. You know, that was back in the day when they were talking about the community of the future with IBM and international paper, and well, you know, the, the notion that is pretty much come and gone. Long uh, Meadow was going to be the MacArthur Boulevard of Tuxedo. Yeah, well, I, I hope that ship has sailed. And because uh, now it's a state forest that has become the gem of what Tuxedo is all about. And it sounds like, you know, we're losing that notion. And then so, the other RO is, is, is the, uh, the Zycom at the top of Clinton uh, Woods. Right. Uh, if, if you went back to the map, which is another spot that I'm thinking, oh, my God, are we really contemplating all of those uses up in there? So that's well, here. So we have a basic tension here, then. We can declare all of this RO to be residential. I mean, there's a big chunk on the other side of 17A there. And on Long Meadow Road, we can declare it all to be residential or special recreation or any of the above, but that doesn't really square with the idea of trying to maximize the non-residential uses I, of the parcels that we have left. I mean, the one there on the lake is, is that the dilapidated building that has just been sitting there that, that harkens back to when this was going to be this, uh, Let's say work in Orange County notion. Um, uh, I don't. If somebody could revive whatever that place was supposed to be, I think okay, um, because that's already been established. The other RO on the corner of Warwick Road, Warwick Brook Road, and Long Meadow Road. Uh, now that that's that's clearing forest just for that sake. And no, this is oh, already. That's Jehovah's. Oh, this RO is the Jehovah's. It's across from the LIO from Tuxedo Farms at Warwick Brook Road. Oh, that, that, so that's international paper. So, I mean, yeah, let's exactly. face it, that's never going to be anything but what their religious uh, space. Right. So, I don't know why that's RO anymore. So, the ROs, well, places of worship were allowed in RO. 
Um, yeah. The ROs but, but, that you have. What intended RO to be there is no longer the case, that's for sure. The ROs that are um, allowed are, or the ROs that are proposed are the ones up by the reservoir, which are ones, one's an existing building, one's a vacant property. And then you have Zycom, and then you have those miscellaneous buildings at the corner by the firehouse. But that's why I'm asking, you know, to be specific about what spots we're talking about. Yep. You know, is that really what we're contemplating in these places? Yep. It's not a that's lot of RO land. Back to uses. Winery, brewery, distillery, or fruit processing. We didn't finish GB. Good night. Good night, boy. We'll see you later. See you in the morning. Good morning. Good day. I've I lost control of my mute button. All right, so. <laughs> so what about GB zone? There were 50%. Two people said yes. Dave, thoughts? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I guess it, I don't have a problem with that in GB. All right, then it gets adopted. Oops. Remember, it's not guaranteed. It's just permitted. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's where it stands. So we're taking out these wholesales and these warehouses. I can I uh, I hate to be picky, but uh, the last one. Um, what do you mean by food processing? That, that was just a way too general. <laughs> Food processing was like an ice cream. And it, it was, says, and there was, there's a tourism component to it because it was especially envisioned again for the tourism business owning district. So we had a very long um, definition of what that is. Uh, where is it? It's not meat packing. No, absolutely not. Here we no, go. No, in fact. This is it here. In fact, we say ah. food processing involving poultry, beef, fish, or similar meat products is prohibited. Ah, great. Okay. So no, no artisan or artisanal jerky. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? That would have to be manufacturing. <laughs> no. No, it's businesses involve vegetables, fruits, grains, dairy ingredients only, like a winery, brewery, ice cream, confectionery, bakery, and cheese shop. And it says. Retail sale of products made on the premises or to market on the premises, as well as dining, tasting, or drinking is allowed accessory to the principal uses. And it says an essential and required element of the business is the operation of tours to display the production and or crafting, crafting process to visitors. So it's supposed to be like a Ben and Jerry's if you go up to, you know, Burlington. That's the mm. concept or something similar. And it wasn't neat because at the time that the board was reviewing this, they were concerned that what could it open it up to? Right. So that was the thought. Okay. Only because of the slaughtering or bringing a meat byproducts aspect of it, there was concern what it could become. Right. Although harvesting vegetables isn't sporting, they can't run away. <laughs> All right. So, um, I think Michelle, it's eight thirty. You had said you wanted to go down the NB line. Well, just NB and TB, um, and just kind of see if people think they can. Another 15 minutes. So I'll zoom in. Let's just see if it all TV? makes sense. What, Ken? Can we start with TB? Sure. Well, are you trying to compare them to one another or just individually looking no. at each zone? Yeah, just, you know, we went through it one way and now let's take the overview look. And see, does this all make sense if all of these uses were permitted in this zone? Okay, can you see these then? Yeah. Yep, I can. Okay. So let me know when you want to scroll. Uh, okay, uh, the first one, I'm not sure why that's their architectural, uh, uh, agricultural use. I'm, I'm not sure. Why that's business? 
Yeah, I'm just not sure why that's now. Just allowing it in the event that someone wanted to do some kind of cultivation in the same yeah, way I'm, potentially someone I, could do I, winery. I'll, I'll be clear, I would vote no on that one. Could there be a, like there is with the food processing, could there be some sort of tourism use? Let her read the agricultural definition. So we're, yeah, I mean, we make sure we're voting on a definition. Right. There it is. It excludes slaughterhouses, concentrated animal feeding operations. That's not what I would have imagined for the tourism business. So that's why I would say no. Okay. So, Perhaps. I mean, unless people were thinking about horse boarding. Right. I mean, where, where Mr. Paul was going was actually this agritourism business, right? Which is, mm -hmm. you know, it's a resort hotel that is pretending to be a farm. Actually, there's a whole, it's becoming, in many of the towns that we're representing, there's this whole agrihood concept where people, instead of, people don't want to build golf courses anymore. And they're building around the idea of keeping crops and then doing farm to table type uses in relation to still doing, you know, vegetable crops, et cetera. Kind of like a blooming hill farm. I mean, could yeah, you say. If you're saying agriculture, that to me says, no, it could just be a farm and that other stuff. That could be blooming hill. Uh, okay, I, I'm just saying, I, I, I'll i just make it simple. I don't see that there. You guys yeah. want to consider it as something other than that? I'm reading that definition and I'm not, I'm thinking to myself, gee, let me think about tourism business. Yeah, let's put a farm there. That, that would not be what I was thinking. So that that's what I'm saying. Do we just, so, so Michelle, to your point, right under agriculture is agritourism use. Okay. And it was activities conducted in association with the agricultural use and offered to the public, including sale of products, education, recreation, active involvement in farm operation. It can include, um, you pick operations. Well, Ken, how do you feel about that? Because that I'm, I'm just looking for a farm to table, which is obviously a draw, and I'm not sure where else we have that specifically defined farm to table. So farm to table more, would be allowed wherever there's a restaurant, farm. but it wouldn't necessarily have the farm there attached to it. So can we have agritourism? I, I think that at least gets to the the T of the column, tourism business. So have agritourism. So there has to be a tourism component to the agriculture. Yeah, that's what I thought when I, when I voted for it in TV. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so. If somebody can make a of that, I think it would be fine. What, have, what does everybody else think? Stays good. No, uh, no to agricultural use. Yes to agritourism. Yes. Okay. Well, I had Jay, Dave, and Ken, so I had. <laughs> yeah. No. Now I'll change this. Stuff. Now agritourism is what I was thinking when I voted for that. Okay. So I'll have to change the definition, obviously. All right. Next. Farm stand. Are we okay with farm stand? Um, I'd be okay with that. Kind of hard to have a farm stand without a farm. Depends <laughs> 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 uh, on how much truck traffic you have. <laughs> Now there's well, we'll have to we'll have to somehow define farm stand so that it doesn't become a glorified supermarket. <laughs> well, it's, you got agritourism, so they can sell the stuff that they're growing 
with the tourists. Yeah, kind of combining agritourism and farm stand or just including it in agritourism. Or the farm stand could be accessory to the agritourism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of a standalone use. Mm. What do you think? Well, because you have it in SH and GB, you wanted it potentially as a separate use, separate and apart from agriculture. I remember when we had this discussion. Mm. Mm. But then in this instance, why not the NB? I wouldn't have a problem with that. Or the TTC. I was, I was just trying to go down the column, so, but that's fine. Not, what do people think? Um, yeah, I agree. Yes. Okay. Um, you were going to put an X at TTC. Yeah, there you go. For farm stand? Are you all okay with that? I thought that's, I thought we just said it. Oh, I thought we said MB, sorry. Oh, did we say TTC for farm stand? If we're in, if, if we're in the middle of town center, it's not a farm stand, it's a vegetable store and falls under retail or grocery. So you probably don't need it there. Are you, you know, we're not gonna allow people to peddle vegetables on the street. <laughs> Except for the farmer's market, that's a whole different thing. Well, that's, I think that that's actually, be, I put it in TTC originally because we have a farmer's market there for part of the year. I thought and we that's were a farm stand, right? Fast. We're going back to horizontal because I don't have that left in me again. Uh, we're at 838. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have yeah. that in me. I don't. Okay. I got to be with you. Either we're going down TB or I'm done. Let's go down TB. You're going down in me, but that's okay. So next one is animal sanctuary. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come back, come back. There you go. From our gallery, you go down to our tavern, boutique retail accessory to principal use. So in my mind, I'm thinking: do, any, do these things that we got X's in TB? Does it does it lend itself to a goal of tourism business, basically on Route 17A, which has had a historical use of of Sterling Gardens ski area. Most recently, this uh, proven. Uh, I mean, they get 170,000 people coming for the Ren Fair and things like that um and what, what and was heavily proposed was a casino not uh so tourism business that's how my brain is working on this whether it should be permissible or not is it promoting that goal over i think we're good right we are Okay, we can go down to the next. And uh, I suppose if anybody has objection. So where are we now? We're at Bar Tavern. Oh, it's good. That's good. Boutique retail accessory. Sounds good. Commercial recreation, indoor and outdoor. Conference center. Yeah, that's good. Cultural and performing art center. That's good. That fits. Then we go down the golf course. Yep. Yep. Health fitness facility. Hotel. I'll do that, I'll do that one. There's a question mark about the multiple uses in the TV. We'll come to that one. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I think you want to all want to think a little more about it. Yeah. Public we outdoor, public outdoor amusement and recreation that was intended to be run fair. 
public sure. utilities, which are kind of everywhere in the town. Mm -hmm. Resort Lodge, business office accessory to resort hotel, restaurant accessory to principal use, restaurant sit down, restaurant takeout. So if someone wanted to do a restaurant by itself in the TV, they could. So by the restaurant takeout, do you mean that that's all they do? Yes. They're not associated with the resort. I'm not crazy about that. But. I would take the takeout one out. There's, it's enough in other areas. I don't know what else they do. There's an, I mean. Because we have restaurant accessories to the principal use. Right. It's part of a resort. But so I can't, if I have a small property and I can't have a small restaurant that does mostly take out food for the people who are busy going to the, to the tourism business, not everybody wants to sit and have a big fancy meal. But if I want to buy food for a picnic. All right. I see what you're saying. Go to the general business. I'll, I'll, I'll drive your car there for you. That, you know, but you won't. And that's not fair. To say, to, to approach it that way. I'll give you a ride. I'm fine with take out there. I'm tired. I, I don't. I, that's not what I envision. No. no. I, 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 Golden arches. If that's the if that's the potential. Let's be, uh, let's be very food. clear. You guys got to read the definitions. Fast food is specifically excluded from takeout. Okay. We're not talking about golden arches here or any other chain hamburger stand kind of place i don't think we allow drive throughs if i recall correct yeah that's right so let's make sure tuxedo's a small town they'll find it on 17. use of a car or parking lot or use of drive through facilities not permitted so it's primarily takeout, but it could be Chinese takeout. It could be Mexican takeout. It could be deli takeout. My vote is you could do that someplace else, but okay. I'm, I'm, I'm one vote of five. All right. I think we can keep it in. Seasonal farm market. Hi right, to that. Able commercial and riding academies. Okay. We're mm -hmm. taking this whole sustainable business park out, I think. I'm yeah. just leaving this in here for the note, though. Um, winery, brewery, distillery, or food processing. Those are your uses in the TV. All right. Oh. I think that's good. Okay. Now you want to go back up to MB? Does anybody have stamina? Why not? Okay. Farm stand. Animal hospital. Because we said wherever our um, offices are allowed. Just remember, we're talking about, about the hospital. one property on Sterling Mine Road, right? Everybody's got that in in their, in yes. their vision pattern. In Eagle That's Valley. the only place we're talking about. Okay. Yep, Goes Eagle Valley. Yep. Antique shop. Art no gallery. Problem. No problem. A bank. No a problem. A tavern. No Antique problem retail. for me. Uh, I could go with that. Business or professional office? I'll go with that. Commercial recreation indoor? If they could find something that would work there, what the hell? A craft workshop? No objection to that. Dry cleaning for pickup and delivery only? Not crazy about that, but okay. Dwellings above ground floor retail personal service, so that's your mixed use buildings. Yep. Grocery store, Fine. health health fitness facility. Fine to me. Medical office. Okay. Multiple uses. Uh, personal service commercial use. Public utilities, which is everywhere. Restaurant accessory to a principal use. Sit down or take out. Retail uses, seasonal farm market, and then winery, brewery, distillery, or food processing. All right. Is there any reason why we wouldn't want to consider a hotel there? I don't think there's no room. How big's that site? I don't. I think Sorry, it's no more than 
five acres. Yeah, it's only five five acres. And it was also supposed to really be addressing the needs of that neighborhood down there. Okay. But you know, again, they are building a, a between the Jehovah's World headquarters and the uh, new telecommunications center they're building. 4.8. I'll I tell you what, on Ken's uh, argument, I mean, so hotel there, uh, um, well, every time I'm I look at stuff, up. every time I go I'm to sure Sterling Court. restrictions and all kinds of things, uh, but. No, let me uh, finish. I was going to say a, a castle. that when I go to IBM on Sterling, uh, over there in Sterling Forest, right down the road from that property, that's a disaster recovery center, and there's tons of people coming there every day from all over the world, and they always have a shortage of places to stay. So maybe that's like the key to success at that location. There you go. So I, there's no reason not to if someone can put one in and make it nice. I'd put a hotel in there. I, that's I, the I, that to me, would have to meet all the restrictions of uh, a view shed and, and height and uh, lighting and all that kind of stuff be, to maintain uh, the uh, the bucolic nature of the forest over there. But, you know. Um, okay, but that's true of anything that's going to go in that spot. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. Just, I would only mention that again. On the one hand, it's on County Route 72. On the other hand, there is a residential neighborhood nearby. So. Yeah, I thought the idea was to provide some services since there's no services in that section of town and there's yep. a lot of commuter traffic and, you know, to have a variety of services as opposed to a hotel. I'd go back to it's not the only use we're proposing, but okay. I'm, I'm, believe me, if you shoot it down, I won't be crying. No, that's exact. But that's exactly it. It's not the only use we're proposing. Yeah, but if right a hotel now, goes in, then there's nothing else can happen there because uh, nothing forward. else has happened there now. I mean, if there was really a demand for small retail or a food store, somebody would have put it in by now. You know, like the market and all that. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, where is everybody? I'm going to ask you to raise your hands if you're okay with hotel. My hand is up. I'm up. My hand's up. Three. Okay, four. <laughs> Not me. I think it okay. needs to be more variety of uses. Okay. okay. So I think we went through all of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're good. So I'm going to send this out to everybody. Thank you. And obviously there's still a public process. There's still comments. There's still property owners who may have comments, but we can, um, this is just part of the process. This but starts to focus us, focus us, focus us on updating the, um, the use tables. Let's, let's talk about process for a minute. We are halfway or almost two thirds of the way through a three month extension on the moratorium, which we're trying to not have to make too many more extensions. Mm -hmm. If we can knuckle down and have a public ready draft document by the end of March, then we can have at a meeting a statement of uh, setting up the public meetings and publishing the draft and give ourselves the other three month extension required to go through that process and be ready to vote on this in June or so in the summer. I think that's what we really need to do. Here. Yep, sounds like a plan. I like it too. Say that in addition to looking at all of this stuff that we're doing here, there's some really kind of nuts and bolts code writing, uh, my kind of code, not your kind of code, Dave, um, that that needs to be done. And I'm I'm sure that that doesn't do well with a committee of seven. So what I'd suggest is that a couple of us 
or as many of us who are who want to, and I definitely would be part of this, could work as a subcommittee. Uh, with our consultant, who I just had a senior moment, and I know it starts with a B, but I can't remember the rest of the name. Um, and uh, we can bang out the, the rest of the corrections, right? I've gotten started. You, you probably eagerly awaited my, my markups of the code as it currently stands, but we can work through that kind of stuff and then let people look at our our draft. So I, I'd volunteer to be on that subcommittee. And if it's a subcommittee of one, I can get to that too. I can be, I can, I'll do it with you. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't remember what I just forgot, so you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you I'm sorry. your dog is going crazy. He's looking the roads. <laughs> He's just having so Oh. So I, I would only say, depending on who wants to be on the subcommittee, that, um, again, if more than two want to be on, then we're into a quorum situation. So we'd have to advertise and it would have to be open to the public. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think there's a decision that needs to be made. Do you want to do this kind of all online? Um, I don't think you're all you're not all meeting at town hall or are you? No, no. OK, no. some communities are. So that's why I was just curious. Um, so then we just need to set up a series of zoom meetings when it's convenient, either during the daytime or in the evening for anybody who wants to participate. In the nuts and bolts. So the last okay. element of the process, I think. Jay, uh, would be continuing vertically down those columns, uh, as we just did rather quickly and successfully for TB and NB. Uh, just finish that up. I, I can't imagine that would be more than 20 minutes uh, with some wrangling. For the entire right. board? Yeah, the entire yeah. board would be good for the next meeting. Yeah, yeah. and then I, I would say that, that the next thing that we're going to need to look at um, is really the special use requirements for the various uses. The yes. Whole. Well, and restrictions, right? Conditions based on... Bulk what tables. we yeah. discussed. Yep. And the bulk tables and the obviously the, the bulk requirements, because we know they're going to be different depending on which zoning district you're in, for instance, for hotels, as we discussed, or resorts, as we discussed. So I think uh, next step is next step is definitions. Also, we also have the huge uh, responsibility of uh, responding to the, the latest from Tuxedo Farms. That's going to be, that's an expectation that is looming pretty much right now. So, to me, that almost eclipses what we're talking about. Well, I mean, we've, we've gotten that, we've gotten that latest red line, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I had a look at it and I, Put you know, put out another one of my missives about my my comments on things. I mean, so yeah, we need to look at it. But so, when do you want to do that? Well, I started making comments. Not you know, I didn't put them on a document, but uh, and Ken, I think you did too. So, um, does that have to be another public meeting, like a workshop like this? I would think people want to hear about this. Absolutely. What was the last red line version? It hasn't been shared widely. Okay. Came recently, I, I think basically it's only been in people's inboxes a very short time. People need to read it so that we can then have, have our open discussion about it. And, uh, but. Well, while we're discussing that, if I could bring in something that, you know, I've, uh, I've really been thinking about it, and I know happened the last time this happened maybe 15 years ago, the board at that time uh, hired a land use attorney at special counsel. And I 
wholeheartedly think we should do that again. And I don't know how the rest of the board feels on that. I definitely don't disagree with that. I, I think uh, uh, nothing needs to uh, short circuit us from reading it and starting to talk about it and, you know, figuring out, uh, you know, what are our questions and how do we identify a land use attorney and who pays for it? Is, is there any way we get the applicant to pay for it? The applicant would pay for it. Sorry. Say that again. If you're if you're revising the special use permit, they have to make application, and um, there's an escrow, and the attorney's fees are paid for by the applicant. There you go. Oh, good. There you go. That's the way it should be. <laughs> way it should be. I mean, there's right. enough, uh, there's enough major changes that I think we need to, you know someone. Uh, you know, who's very adept at this and does this to help us out. I just want to make sure we're clear that we're still out what we had outstanding. Uh, the Clinton Woods parcel. So we have to remember we have to, we're looking for some guidance on that one, right, Bonnie? Yes, yeah, so that you um, be up there in Clinton Woods. I think that you probably would be, I still think it'd be useful for you to have an offline conversation with Howard. Yeah, um, because it was a subject of litigation. You have new board members that may not be familiar with it. I don't know who has whatever stipulation exists. And so it's really, I think it's useful to have that conversation with Howard as a, okay. as a board. Right. Although I would, Howard made some comments earlier today. So, which were distributed by email. So if you guys have a look at them. He did. That, yeah. that would be helpful, but I agree we should. Figure out what's uh, we might need a we might need five minutes with Howard or ten minutes with Howard at, at the next board meeting in the executive session to to go over where we stand what our restraints are. Okay. So where is I mean I uh, I would be willing to get uh, referrals for land use attorneys if the board wants to go that route. So long as we get somebody who has a sense of alacrity, this is not a billing project, even though the applicant might be paying for it. There's there is some urgency to be resolved. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, you know, if, if, if the alacrity is that, you know, uh, this is a project that hopefully we want to see go forward to the advantage of, of tuxedo uh, that, you know, this isn't uh, that I, let me leave it at that. that well, I guess we can get a sense when we talk to people. I, I just, you know, of course, that's what we want and we want it done now. <laughs> but uh, I mean, we want to get through it. We just have to. Yeah, of course, we, we, we want. We want to make sure that the, the bulk of what was negotiated in the special use permit, the intention there uh, is is delivered upon with, with the understanding that I think we all know that some of the basic premises of of of, of these uh, the layout needs to change. But the bulk of what has been negotiated as beneficial to the town and, and to our environment and everything else needs to stand. I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Dave? Yeah, I mean, it's 901, uh, you know, we're not, uh, not proposing that we start opening that can of worms at 901, but I just wanted to get it on, you know, I think everybody on the town board at least has the red line master. Uh, you know, we need to at least get it on an agenda where we're starting to talk about it openly. And, uh, and so that's all I'm proposing. Okay. So that we do this in an open fashion, because this is of paramount importance to everyone who lives in tuxedo. And, uh, well, I think people, 
excited about it you now that finally you know um serious next step yeah absolutely okay do we have a next date for any of these uh, meetings? Uh, can we, because they would obviously have to be publicly noticed. And uh, we had originally a lot of just a few Mondays when we don't have town board meetings. So the next one would be the uh, when, oh, March, March 1st. 1st. Is that okay with you, Bonnie? Uh, yes, I believe so. I just have to make sure. Michelle, I see you have Climate Smart Task Force at 5.30 on the 1st. Yeah, we keep it to an hour, so that, that, that would be all right. Okay. I could actually try and move that to 5.15. Just showing you that I wrote that down. I, I am so impressed you don't know. I would hope so. <laughs> I'm shocked. Yeah, nah, I don't want to go that far, but. No, I'm kidding. But thank you. Me too. Me too. I'm just I checking. Every, I love everybody. You know that. Okay. <laughs> We're talking about it's 630. Really on, is my, is uh, uh, Bonnie okay with 630 on Monday, March 1st? Yes, that will work. I was just checking my Montgomery meetings, and that's March 8th. So March 1st will work. Great. And then, I so mean, should we think about meeting workshop again? And uh, Michelle, could you just make sure that Marissa has this publicly noticed? Okay. I, I, and I do. I would like to say, you know, I noticed that we're actually using the calendar on our Civics Plus website. Uh, boy, that deserves a round of applause. I think that's the bloody first time I was able to go to the calendar and verify that 6.30 was the time, not 7 o'clock. And uh, that, no, I'm, I'm semi-joking, but man, that's, that's a big step forward. We were not using our calendar with the old website, and uh, excellent. So that's no joke. That's a big step forward. Thank you. So we just need to get that on the calendar with Marissa. Or I don't know why any of us couldn't add it, you know, to that calendar. Uh, uh, Marissa started showing me how to add things to uh, Civics Plus. Okay. Should we think about the one after that? The that would be the fifteenth uh, of March. If why don't we just put it in there as a placeholder, just in case we need it? We may not even need it. Seems to work okay. for me. March 15th? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Can I make a motion to adjourn this meeting? Sounds good. Sure. Uh, that motion by Ken, seconded by Dave McMillan to end this special meeting workshop at 9.05. I'll take a quick roll call vote. Ken English, aye. Dave McMillan. Aye. Jay Reichscott. We're just getting started, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maria May and the dogs. Aye. <laughs> I think I had a box. There, that was there, a nod. There are the roads outside. <laughs> Lindsay and the cats. Like yeah, the cats. Where yes. the cats? I, okay, I think I heard a meow. Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, you guys. Sorry to anybody. Uh, it's just, it's just cranky old me. What can I tell you? Okay, thank you. Right, thank Bye. you, uh, Frank and Ned, for joining us. Yeah, thank That's you. Absolutely. Thanks, Bonnie. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bonnie. Bye. Thank you, Bonnie.